Good morning guys, uh, Anjani Kumar here, dealing instrumentation subject for final year electrical students. <coughs> Today, I am going to discuss about the final concept related to first unit, so that is a measuring system. Right? In the last session, we discussed about <coughs> what is a modulation. So what is a modulation, what is the need of modulation, right? So what is the, what are the different types of modulations that we discussed. So after that, uh, what are the categories, how the modulations are categorized. So modulations basically categorized into two types, so the continuous modulation and pulse modulation. So in a continuous modulation means, your carrier signal so which is a continuous form pulse modulation means whatever the carrier signal so if you want to modulation require you just you, you just definitely require a carrier signal so that is a high frequency signal so so in pulse modulation you have a carrier wave so your carrier signal which is a pulse pulse type signal right in continuous signal you have a different types continuous modulation you have a different types so those are amplitude modulation frequency modulation and pulse modulation phase modulation right so what is amplitude modulation your amplitude amplitude of a carrier wave will change according to the message signal and that signal is going to be transferred right what is the frequency modulation? The frequency of a carrier wave will be modified according to the according to the shape of a message signal, then it will be transferred. So phase also modified of a carrier signal. So in the each and every time your carrier signal is going to be changed, but your message signal won't change. So because your message signal you need to transfer for a long distances. So that's why you should concentrate on a carrier signal, so which is superimposed, right? Combination, combined, low frequency, high frequency, then only the signal is going to be transferred, right? We clearly, we clearly discussed about all this information related to modulation signal. Now one more, the last concept uh, which is related to <coughs> modulation means one more type. So that is called a pulse code modulation. So there is pulse code modulation, very very important. So what is the advantages, what is the disadvantages, what is the process, very very important question. Definitely will get this type of question in your board exams, right? So what is pulse code modulation? So this we can call it as a PC. Right. The main function of a pulse code modulation is which converts analog signal into digital signal. So what is the main function of pulse code modulation is analog signal, whatever the continuous signal, analog message which is converted to digital. Now your computer will understand uh, only digital form, 0, 1 form only. So the main concept of a pulse code modulation which converts analog signal into digital signal. Right? So before going to pulse code modulation, we just need to know what is a samples. What is a samples and what is a sampling theorem. So we should know. So before going to pulse code modulation. Because this is one of the techniques that is going to be used in your pulse code modulation figure. Alright. So the first one is a samples.
Click Samples. Right. So whatever the sample and sampling theorem is uh, different, so somewhat different. You should remind this: sample is different, and sampling theorem is different. Right? So right. What is a sample? So sample means so the continuous signal which is converted to. discrete signal so that we can call it as a sample so sample means whatever the continuous signal so which is converted to discrete nature so that is called as a sample now we will see but suppose you have a continuous signal right so this is a continuous signal your message signal so which can be converted to discrete signal so that's how discrete nature So that, not, that, that is nothing but continuous signal which is converted to discrete nature. So the conversion which is called samples. So each and every point we can call it as a sample. My input is continuous which is converted to discrete nature. So that is called as samples. Now what is a sampling theorem says? Right. Sampling theorem states that your continuous signal which is converted to discrete signal definitely your whole continuous signal which is converted to discrete nature. So after that you can retrieve back you can retrieve back uh, this discrete nature to continuous signal. Right. I hope it's clear. So the continuous signal in discrete nature can convert just some. So definitely we can retrieve back this, this from the discrete signal to your original signal also you can retrieve back. So with this, with, with its condition is that. So that condition states the sampling theorem. So samples means your analog signal which is converted to discrete nature. So what is the sampling theorem states that your continuous signal is converted to discrete nature. And uh, so we can retrieve back your original message signal from the uh, discrete signal itself. So with a simple condition. So that is called a sampling theorem. So what is the condition it is? No, I don't want to write all this information because I explained clearly. It's better you have to note it down. Right? So what is the sampling theorem states that your continuous signal is converted to discrete nature and it can retrieve back your original message signal that is nothing but continuous signal from your discrete nature itself. So with a condition. So what is that condition? Fs which is greater than or equal to 2fm. So F S, so we can call it as a sampling frequency. So I'll explain the concept. It is sampling frequency. Right? So F S is nothing but sampling frequency. So F M is nothing but maximum frequency of message signal. Message signal is nothing but my input continuous signal. Right? So, what is the sampling theorem states that the sampling theorem states that your continuous signal which can be converted to discrete signal after that you can retrieve back your continuous signal from the discrete nature. So, with a condition. So, what is that condition? Fs. So, what is the Fs is greater than or equal to 2fm so fs is nothing but your sampling frequency and what is fm fm is nothing but uh, uh, the maximum frequency of your message signal now i'll clearly show how the sampling theorem will work we'll see but suppose
सो दिस इज माई मैसेज सिग्नल और कंटिन्यू सिग्नल और मैसेज सिग्नल राइट सो विच कैन बी कन्वर्टेड टू डिस्क्रिट नेचर राइट सो इट्स डायरेक्टली कन्वर्टेड नो नॉट पॉसिबल सो वी रिक्वायर पल्स ऑफ ट्राइंस सो वी रिक्वायर पल्स ऑफ ट्राइंस right so we need to convert this continuous signal with a discrete signal you won't directly convert so we require a train of pulses so this is called train of pulses whose time period is ts right so whose frequency is fs so we need to multiply this continuous signal with a train of pulse signal so then you will convert your discrete signal right how it will convert we'll see so you are going to be multiply with uh, these train of signals with your message signal then you will convert your continuous signal into discrete nature then how it will be right if you if you multiply you'll get the equations like this right in this way your continuous signal is converted to discrete nature right in discrete form you'll get a infinite magnitude the magnitude is different different magnitudes you will get there. from lower value is zero per suppose if it is zero the maximum is eight you are assuming that so between zero to eight you will get a different different magnitude this is somewhat uh, little samples that i have taken from this one but we have a more number of samples infinity samples right infinity samples which is having infinite magnitude between 0 to maximum 8 low value is 0 highest value is 8 so between 0 to 8 you will getting infinite values of a samples all right so all right so if you draw us overline sketch over this thing right again you'll retrieve back your original continuous signal from the discrete nature so this retrieve back so it you won't directly get this one it 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 delivers uh, with the help of some condition so this condition states that sample theorem right you want directly directly you will draw this line in order to get your original continuous signal so it must be depends on a theorem so how we how you can draw means we have to satisfy one condition so that condition retrieves the sampling theorem so what is that condition i have already explained what is the condition fs should be greater than or equal to 2 f you know fs so what is fs a sampling frequency the frequency of a train of pulses that uh, which you want to multiply these train of pulses to a continuous signal right so then only you will get uh, uh, these uh, samples right so what is fm so fm is nothing but maximum value of a frequency so which is having uh, some frequency now this is a message frequency right so what is fm so maximum frequency of a message which is a maximum frequency now how you can calculate it right but i suppose so signal signal which is having more combination right so uh, my input signal which is having a different combinations right but suppose signal which is periodic signal which is having different combinations right we already studies it studied in your uh, periodic or periodic waveforms right so what is sign but suppose the signal which is having sign 2 pi t plus sign 3 pi t plus sign 4 pi t so from that you have to find out which one is a maximum from here so what is a omega 1 2 pi omega 2 3 pi omega 3 4 pi so it is a 2 pi f1 is equal to 2 pi so f1 is equal to 1 2 pi f2 is equal to 3 pi 
three of two is equal to three by two. So that means one point five. F three is equal to four pi by two pi. So that is nothing but two value. The maximum value of this frequency is a maximum frequency of your continuous signal. All right. So what? Which one is a maximum? So F M. How you can calculate your F M means the maximum value of F one, F two, F three. So which one is a maximum value? Two. Right. So this in this way you can calculate the. maximum value so beyond this you won't have any that much uh, syllabus this is entirely uh, for electronics uh, syllabus right uh, these things are enough uh, uh, to study so what is a samples <coughs> right so what is a samples how you can generate a samples what is a sampling theorem states that and all these things right so what is a samples samples means your analog signal which is converted to discrete nature so that we can call it as a samples so what is a sampling theorem definitely your analog signal which is converted to discrete signal but we can recruit back your continuous signal from the discrete nature with exhibit some condition which solve some condition so that condition is fs which is greater than the 2fm if this condition satisfies you can retrieve your continuous signal from your discrete nature all right so from this i'll clearly explain with the uh, examples and uh, and um, with the uh, graphical situations and all these things this is my continuous signal so if you want to generate your samples we have a train of pulses you have to assume train of pulses so you need to multiply these train of pulses that means superimpose your train of pulses on continuous signal only you will get your sample signal right drawing the outer sketch So outer lines, you will get your original continuous signal. But in order to draw, you need to satisfy one condition. So what is that condition? F S is a greater than or equal to two F M. So this is the condition we need to satisfy. Right? What is that condition? Means F S greater than two F M. What is F S? F S is nothing but uh, frequency of a sampling theory, sampling wave. So the train of pulses uh, frequency, sampling frequency. So what is F M? F M is nothing but the maximum frequency of a message signal so whatever the input signal maximum frequency how you can calculate your maximum frequency means so which one is a maximum for the signal so for the total signal frequencies that is your maximum frequency how you can calculate it also we discussed about right so this is about uh, samples and sampling theorem right now you are going to enter into the pulse code modulation i hope it's clear about uh, how the samples and sampling theorem states all right now we are moving into the pulse code modulation all right so we can call it as a pcm So, what is the main function of pulse code modulation? It converts analog data into digital form. So, which one is to convert analog signal into a digital digital nature? So, which is having a three parts? Very very important. So, if you if you clearly understand this one, definitely you directly. a uh, right uh, you no need to prepare all these things you directly go to the exam and write uh, whatever the thing uh, what i am saying here right no need to study no need to buy out on all these things right so which is having a three parts the first one is a uh, samples so first one is a uh, samples and the second one is a uh, quantization and the third one is encoder 
so pulse code modulation which is having how many parts which is having a three parts the first one is a samples and the second one is a quantization and third one is a encoder first i'll clearly explain the block diagram so after that uh, we'll derive each and every component individually right first you have to assume how the pulse code modulation will work right the first <coughs> which is having samples right another one is a quantizer and the third one is encoder right so these are the three parts right right now you are giving whatever the signal that you need to convert it to digital form that you are giving to this input right so what is the input so my input is a message signal so this is a continuous signal whatever it may be so the per suppose the value 0 to 8 this is this is a maximum value 8 and this is a my message signal which we need to convert into digital form first i need to move into the samples sampler sampler right sampler which samples your continuous signal so that means which convert your continuous data into digital discrete form itself right which convert your continuous form right how which will convert your continuous form into discrete form right right so what is a sampler will do you will convert uh, analog data continuous form into discrete form right that is a function of a sample so you know how the samples will work so here fs should be greater than or equal to 2f which is having a train of pulses so the train of pulses which will be multiplied this continuous signal then only you will get your discrete and discrete pulses right you are continuous signal which is converted to discrete nature now then this discrete nature which is having infinite values right infinite value of a magnitude from minimum value is 0 the maximum value is 8 so between 0 to 8 you have a infinite train of pulses right which is having a different magnitude right so that uh, it will gives to the quantizer right so what is the purpose of a quantizer the quantizer will give a fixed value of a magnitudes for given different pulses discrete nature is there na you are getting your discrete nature discrete wave form which is having a different train of pulses which is having a infinite magnitudes from 0 to 8 but one day there will make this infinite magnitude each and every magnitude which is having a fixed magnitude so what is the function of a quantizer means quantizer in this ante ikkada different different magnitudes unnai kada so these type of train of pulses ki oka fixed magnitude ni create chestu so that's it you have a train of pulses which is having a different magnitude right here 0.3 0.8 1.3 infinite magnitudes minimum value 0 maximum value 8 between you have a different value of pulses you don't know each and every values of a magnitude infinite magnitudes right so infinity of a pulses with different magnitudes but so my quantizer what the quantizer do means it will create a fixed magnitude for each and every pulses right i'll give each fixed magnitude for suppose if it is 1.3 it will make as a fixed value if it is 2.6 it will make as a fixed value right quantizer will make a fixed value fixed value of magnitude right which is having a quantization level so we'll discuss right after that the signal which is going to the encoder so there is nothing but fixed pulses which is having encoder so encoder will converts a digital nature how the encoder will converts you know we'll see 
all the all the information but i have to brief sketch how the pulse code modulation will work uh, and I, i define each and every block with neatly no doubt about that uh, but you have to understand so how the functioning itself right right what is the function which is having how many blocks there are three blocks first one is a samples quantization and encoder right <coughs> so samples means your analog signal what is the input signal which is converted to discrete nature which is having an infinite magnitude of pulses between 0 to 8 that you assume that so what is a quantization quantization will give fixed value of a magnitude for each every each and every pulses from the sampler after that your encoder will encode these train of pulses to your digital form right this is a simple function itself but now you understand the quantization quantizer which is having quantization levels right how it will convert a fixed magnitude means it's it's it won't directly convert the fixed magnitude so it is having a quantization levels right so how many levels first your encoder will decide encoder will decide an value so whatever the input signal that you are giving continuous signal na any bits lo nen represent cheyala right how many bits that we have to represent at the output the encoder will decide but suppose if encoder is 2 that means whatever the input signal i have to represent it to 2 bits right i have to represent it to 2 bits or else if you put n is equal to 3 whatever the input signal continuous signal that i have to represent 3 bits i have to represent 4 bits whatever it may be depends on encoder bits your quantization will work so how many quantization levels 2 power n quantization levels q i n t quantization levels instantaneous levels of a quantization how many quantization levels if it n is equal to 2 how many quantization level 4 quantization levels right so this is out sketch of here whatever the quantizer 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 will give a fixed value of a magnitude from magnitude to, to the discrete values from the samplers right so quantizer which is having a quantization levels so how many quantization levels will be depends on the encoder value so encoder will decide how many bits that i have to represent your continuous signal so with this a quantizer will make a note on that so the encoder decided two bits so i have to create create two power n quantization levels so i need to prepare four level to obtain the maximum magnitude that means to obtain a fixed magnitude to, to your continuous signal so that we need to represent now i will clearly explain i will take more input signal <laughs> then how your input signal is converted to digital form with the help of pcm we'll see <coughs> right you know about quantizer quantizer means it gives a fixed value of a magnitude <sighs> now the main important concept here is quantizer quantizer at the moment everything is fine But suppose so this is your input signal so that uh, you are going to convert it uh, into digital form right so the maximum value is 0 so the minimum value is 0 maximum value is 8 so this is your message signal continuous signal right so definitely which is converted to samples meeku samples gone ikkada represent cheyalanke output sketch chesina appudu meeku artham kadu so that's what i am not drawing the samples because the sample which is having a magnitude itself but different magnitude so what is a quantizer quantizer will make that magnitude to fixed magnitude that's it so nothing is there i don't want to draw the samples here right now i am assuming 
I am assuming my encoder will how many bits of representation? Two bits. How many quantization levels? Four levels. Kavana. Quantization levels in undala. Four levels undala. But before quantization, I'm assuming that uh, some voltages, right? So what are that? I'm assuming that some voltages. This is two. Two. This is, these are not quantization level. That just I am assuming, right? Four. Six, eight, eight volts. Right? I am assuming some levels. So, what are the levels? Zero volts, two volts, four volts, six volts, eight volts. Right? You have to choose any volts. But now, now you have to put quantization levels. How many levels? There are four levels. So you just directly put your quantization levels. So this is one level of quantization. You, you just make a note. Whatever the quantization level you wish. So this is one quantization level. What is that? One volts. This is three volts. This is five volts. This is seven volts. So these three are a quantization levels. In the four which I because my encoder will decide two bits. Two bits encoder is like how, how many quantization levels there are two four n levels. So two square. That is equal to four quantization levels you have to represent. Whatever way you have to represent your four quantization levels. Alright. Now I am drawing. So, in samples, And the now I am drawing the samples. So, how the samples are going to be taken for a given input waveform. So, this is my input waveform. So, before this, you have to take uh, samples. Right? But the samples, that's not that much uh, important. Uh, if you draw here, definitely you won't understand. Now, I am going to draw the samples. Sample is like this. So whatever it may be, right? Right. So these are the samples. So minimum value is zero, maximum value is eight volts. Zero, eight volts. Right. Nikki samples on quantization levels on Now you are going to assume it that. But suppose now the what is the purpose of a quantization means the quantization will give a fixed magnitude to your samples so what is your samples but suppose you can do samples this one value 1.3 one then value into the 1.3 right now you will see 1.3 so here so which quantization level is nearer to 1.3 one volts is nearer to 1.3 so you should make you should fix that magnitude is one you have to put one right so this quantization level is one see so what is a quantization level quantization so actual value is 1.3 right so you are fixing your quantization is one so what is a point three? So this is called quantization error. I hope uh, you clear. I'll clearly explain one more time. Now I'm taking the samples. Samples which is having infinity of magnitudes between zero to eight. But suppose this sample is one point three. Another sample is two point six. It's very difficult to find out your digital form for this so the quantization will make uh, this magnitude into fixed magnitude so that is the purpose of a quantization so 1.3 is there so the quantization level in the 1.3 so that's why which quantization level is there one is the nearest to quantization level na? you have to fix that value is that one but suppose if you val if this value is 
थ्री पॉइंट एट थ्री पॉइंट एट वोल्ट सेकेंड उठा दी थ्री पॉइंट एट वोल्ट मीन्स और फोर पॉइंट एट वोल्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड इट विल टेक इट एज अ फोर पॉइंट एट सो फोर पॉइंट एट एक्ट उठा दी सो वट इज यूर सो हियर फोर पॉइंट एट मीन हियर सम वट सम वट दिस डिस्टेंस रईट सो ये क्वांटेशन दगर फाइव वोल्ट अने क्वांटेशन दगर सो यू कैन ट्रीट इट ऐस फाइव वोल्ट सो विच इज गिविंग अ फिस्ड मैग्नेट्यूड यू शुड मेक ए नोट ऑन दिस मेक ए फाइव वोल्ट लाइक like that you have to put each and every samples you have to take uh, representations right so you will give a fixed representation right now now okay quantization levels are over then we'll move to the encoder so encoder how many bits two bits with two bits how many combinations will be present for a two bits means 0 1 so how many combination 0 0 0 1 1 0 11 right so how many quantization level four levels for this quantization level your encoder will specifies this value for each and every quantization so first value what is a 1 volt quantization 0 0 so 0 1 1 0 11 all right so whatever the input signal it's a continuous signal na this continuous level 1.3 is a this continuous level which is converted to 0 0 right 4.8 so which is converted to 10 right per suppose if, if, if it is a 6.9 volts so it can be make it as 7 volts so converted as 11 like that each and every continuous part which is converted to digital nature so the encoder will retrieve the digital form i hope it's clear so i'll explain one more time guys right so pulse code modulation which is having a three parts the first one is a sample quantization and the third one is encoder so what is the purpose of a samples samples which converts a continuous form into discrete form so this discrete form is is nothing but infinity of a pulses right infinity of pulses which is having a different magnitudes right 1.3 2.6 2.9 3.5 4.9 so like that we have a different pulses with different magnitudes right <laughs> right so after that your pulses are over discrete nature is over after that you will enter into the quantization so what is the purpose of quantization quantization will make a quantization levels how many quantization levels will be depends on encoder encoder will specifies whatever the bits how many in how many bits your input continuous signal are going to be represent if encoder specifies n is equal to 2 means whatever the input signal that you are giving that that will represent to digital form in 2 bits form if it is 4 means input signal in 4 bits to represent chestadi atla right if n is equal to 2 specify chesamo then quantization em chestadi okay encoder n is equal to 2 ichindi so na so that i have to make 2 power n quantization levels how many quantization levels four quantization levels kavalu naaku now what is a quantization it gives a fixed value of a magnitude for samples right here the samples are different different magnitudes right 1.3 4.8 6.9 right for this the quantization will gives a fixed value of a magnitudes right per per suppose for 1.3 what is a quantization level 1 for 4.8 what is a quantization level 5 for 6.9 what is a quantization level 7 so these train of pulses ki fixed magnitudes ochnai right one now encoder will decide for a two combinations 0 1 1 for a two bits for a two bits how many combinations is there 0 0 combination 0 1 combination 1 0 combination 1 1 combination so this is a one quantization this is two this is three this is four quantization level you have to represent these uh, combinations for each and every quantizations right 
so this is 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 specify CSS. if it is 1.2 what is that my digital value 0 0 if it is 4.8 what is my digital value 1 0 if it is 6.9 what is my digital value 1 1 it atla but suppose if it is but suppose if it, if it is 2.9 so what is my digital value what is my quantized, quantized value 3 3 means what is the value 1 0 is my digital form but suppose if it is if it is uh, 0 0.9 so what is a quantize quantization in just the then the girl on a level me fix just 0 0.9 the girl on a quantization level nt 1 volts then fix it just the so what is the value 1 volts 1 volts and 0 0 representation like that whatever the continuous form which will be converted into digital form so this is about uh, pulse code modulation i hope it's clear if you have any doubt so feel free to ask me or else uh, please rewind and uh, watch again and again so definitely you'll understand all right now we will discuss about what is the advantages and disadvantages of this uh, pulse code modulation right so definitely what is advantages if you are creating this means you are going to eliminate the noise right noise reduction right and second one is it is a form of analog to digital conversion right and the third one it can store the data it can store the data or retrieve any time because we are using a sampling theorem right so it can stores the data and it can retrieve at any further right so these are the advantages right we can eliminate the noises right this is a conversion from analog to digital conversion and we can store the data with the help of pcms and we can retrieve at any time right so with the help of pcms you can store the data and you can retrieve at any part right now the disadvantages the first disadvantage is circuit is complex complex right and circuit is a complex but suppose if encoder will de decide 5 so how many quantization levels 2 power 5 quantization level it is very difficult to draw all these 2 power n is equal to 2 that means 4 quantization you can easily draw the 4 quantization levels n is equal to 3 that means 8 quantization you can easily draw but 2 power 4 16 16 quantization levels you have to draw and each and every point will be make the fixed magnitude so with it you can specify right values for n is equal to 3 means 2 power cube that means 8 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that means 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 triple 1 so with that 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 that means with with available fixed uh, fixed values so chosen values is now for suppose 0 to 100 if you are choosing the values so with that you have to insert these things fixed quantization level you have to represent and denoted your digital value directly right like this uh, 2 power 5 2 power 6 it's very difficult to draw all these things so that is one of one of the disadvantages and, and the second one is circuit complexity right complex means the encoder kawala, right quantizer kawala, samples kawala, right so these are the three things you have to satisfy the result will be very very less they require more time but it track accurate results so what is the advantages so this is accurate right and one more advantage so these are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, pulse code modulation so this is about pulse code modulation advantages noise reduction analog to digital store the data and accurate disadvantages means if n is equal to 5 means no more number of quantization levels you have to discuss it's very difficult so there will be a complexity encoder decoder quantization samples and all these things so the circuit is complex so this is about uh, quantization this is about uh, pulse code modulation uh, thank you for now